so tired today. Checking YouTube early in the morning. Oh yeah, one dollar eighteen cents. On my way to work, got my gym bag. Super late. Hair on point though. Like I don't even know why I even try to be on time because Everyone I work with is always freaking late, like 20 minutes late, 30 minutes late. And my manager doesn't do anything about it, so. And my manager's late all the time too. <laughs> so, I'll be all right. So I'm pulling up to work and my manager's right behind me, so I beat him technically. <laughs> Original Gangsters wins again. Alright, so I'm on my break, decided to make a little video for y'all. Met a guy named Zach yesterday at the gym, and he came up to me, he's like, hey, I see you all the time, uh, I got a question for you, how do you get big? Uh, I've been trying so hard, uh, I, I don't know what to do to get bigger. Uh, so I had two questions for him. The first question was, how many calories are you eating every day? Uh, the second question I asked him was, how much protein are you eating every day? His answers were, which is a very common answer, you know, I'm eating as much as I can, I'm eating three to four meals a day, uh, and I'm having protein shakes every day. If this sounds like you, uh, then basically you don't have any awareness of, you don't have any caloric awareness, and you don't have any macro awareness. This is very critical in making strength gains. It's also very critical in making muscle gains as well. So it might be very confusing because you're hitting the gym four to five times a week, but you're not seeing anything happen. Well, it's very simple. The number one key factor here is that you need to be at a caloric surplus. If you're dialing in your calories and they're at maintenance or below, chances of you um, growing or creating optimal muscles uh, is very slim. You don't have the amount of nutrients that your body's looking for to grow. And all these issues in growing in strength and developing muscle all stems from one problem area. It's because uh, most people, they, they want abs or they want to slim down. But then at the same time, they want to increase their bench press, their squat, and their deadlift. But uh, as they try, nothing is really happening and they can't make any strength gains. Well, the main reason is because you're at a caloric deficit and it's totally not correlating with your goals. So when you're trying to do, if you're trying to get shredded or if you're trying to bulk, you need to have your macros and your calories correlate with your goals and the main reason I'm saying that is because it is virtually impossible for you to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time hence the very common uh, practices of bulking and cutting so once you've figured out what you're trying to do and since this video is m mainly about bulking you need to adjust your calories to what you're growing and that means fat as well. So you wanna adjust your calories to about 3,000 or above. That's usually a good bulk, assuming that your maintenance calories around 2,600 calories. Of course, you're not gonna maintain the same amount of calories for a whole year. Let's say you're bulking for a year, because we wanna bulk long-term. Uh, bulking is never ever a short-term thing. You have to plan this out 
for six months to a year. I know I just currently did a, a small bow for four to five months, but that's because I want to get <clears throat> a more full uh, look before I cut down for the summer. Because I had been cutting for a while before this bulk. When you've got your calories all figured out, you want to hit that surplus every single day. If you're doing two, two days out of the week and you're hitting surplus and then five days are um, maintenance or deficit, there's, there's no question about it that you are the one to blame if you're not getting strength increases or muscle growth. Personally, in my opinion, bulking takes much more effort than cutting. Bulking requires more money, uh, you have to eat a lot more, it's hard getting all those calories in, and um, cutting, you know, it's easy to be at a deficit, you just eat less and control your self-control. But sometimes you just don't want to get all those calories in, your appetite's not on point, and it's just not working for that day. But uh, the idea is you need to maintain a caloric surplus frequently or else you won't grow. And it's not gonna happen instantly. You might have to bulk for one to two months for your body to adjust and realize that you have so much energy um, to push harder and train harder and your your muscles are gonna get used to it later on in your bulk so after a certain time period your body starts cruising and your strength gains keep going up keep going up and that pretty much breaks your plateau when you plateau it's because your calories aren't sufficient enough now if you are if your surplus is always on point you'll never plateau ever and if you do, that just means you need to up the calories a little more. And then if you do again, you repeat the steps and increase more. You see it all the time. People want six pack abs and they want to get lean and cut, but they still want to increase their bench press and uh, all, their, all their key lifts like squats and deadlifts. Well, when you want to get abs, that means you're at a caloric deficit. And since you're at a caloric deficit, you don't have the means to be hitting your PRs at all because you just don't have the the fuel to do so so when you're at a caloric deficit don't focus on making strength gains just focus on having a good workout um, burning the glycogen in your body and uh, getting a good pump all that is is just uh, you know burning the calories that you need to burn in order to lose weight if you guys are trying to get big and it's your first one to three years, I highly suggest that you do not disrupt your bulk uh, because it's just because it's summertime and you want to look good while you have your shirt off when you're at the pool or playing sports or whatever. It's critical at this time for you to always be at a surplus and make the, as many, as much gains as you possibly can with your caloric surplus for a consistent amount of time. Honestly, I've been working out for nine to 10 years and just three years ago did I start tracking my macros. All I ever knew was, hey, I, I just need to be consistent and um, with the workouts and everything, and then I'll grow. But uh, I never really got down to the macros, science of the nutrition and everything. So it is a huge advantage if you're a beginner and a huge advantage if you haven't been tracking. All I knew was that I need to eat a lot and I need to work out a lot. And that's basically the principles of bodybuilding. It's just, are you eating enough? You think you, you're eating enough, but you actually aren't. And then uh, you are eating enough, but you're not working out enough, so you're getting a little fat. I believe about 40% of the whole bodybuilding muscle growth is working out. 60% is your diet. If you're working out hard and you're not making any strength gains and you're eating about 2,000 calories, that's the main reason. You need to be eating more. You, have, you can't be scared to put on a little bit of fat, uh, which most people are. Um, you need to gain fat to gain muscle. It's part of it. I just felt like this topic was something I should have gone over during my bulk. Unfortunately, I'm coming to the end of my bulk and I should have done this right when I started about four to five months ago. But hey, uh, it's better late than never, right? 
So this is for the people that are going to bulk through the summer, okay? So don't start cutting because it's the summer. Continue your bulk. And if you're a beginner, just keep on bulking, okay? If you're gaining a little weight, then tone down the uh, calories just a little bit and then maybe add some more cardio if your appearance isn't what you like. But it's critical. If you're doing this for the long term and you want to get big uh, and have an impressive physique, then bulking for the first two to three years is very critical for you, okay? So uh, don't get caught up in bulking and then cutting and bulking and cutting because it's only going to hinder your overall appearance in the long term, okay? For my bulks, I usually hit around 170 to 200 grams of protein, and that remains constant. So I already know my protein, and I don't mind hitting around 80 grams to 100 grams of fat, so that only leaves me with carbs, so it usually ranges from 300 to 400 grams of carbs. And that's for a total of at least 3,000 calories. And that's pretty much how your bulk macros should look as well. So take that into consideration, experience it, and monitor how your body's reacting. If you're getting too much fat, then decrease the, um, decrease the calories and the proportionate amount of macros. If you're not gaining strength fast enough, then increase the calories. If you're not gaining fat at all, then you can still increase the calories. It's all up to you to have a starting point and then adjust as you go and uh, have that work with um, your goals. Okay, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for the uh, talk on a caloric surplus and getting past your plateau or problem period. Um, the key is to eat a lot. More calories, more power, more strength, and more muscle growth. That's all there is to it. If you're not eating enough, you shouldn't expect yourself to grow or get stronger, okay? Like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see y'all soon, okay?